Welcome to How It Works, a video series from Law Sites in which you get to see hands-on demonstrations of legal tech products directly from the developer. I'm Bob Ambrogi, the publisher of Law Sites, and today we're getting a first-hand look at LollyLaw, a cloud-based all-in-one practice management platform designed for immigration law firms, which was recently acquired by law practice management company Paradigm. Joining me today to tell us about it and show us how it works is John Levesque, co-founder of Lolly Law and now co-general manager of Lolly Law at Paradigm. John, welcome to How It Works. Hey, thank you, Bob. Good to be here. John, before we get started with the demonstration, tell us a little bit of background on Lolly Law. Sure thing. So uh, Lolly is, as you mentioned, a cloud-based case management system built from the ground up specifically for immigration attorneys. It's very intuitive and easy to use. It was originally developed uh, for my wife, who several years ago was starting her own practice. Uh, and I was assisting her in finding tools that would help get her set up and run her operations. And when I had looked, um, I didn't see anything that, that I would have recommended to her. So uh, a group of us got together, amongst them uh, my wife and a number of other uh, immigration attorneys, uh, and we designed and developed Lolly Law. Well, when you have to live with your customer, I assume you have to do a really good job with it. Oh, the uh, yes, the uh, the level of quality has to be very high. Great. Uh, well, can you show us a little bit about how it works? What are you going to show us today? Okay, so um, there's a number of things that I would love to show people, uh, but we're going to focus today on two things specifically, that being the ease of initiating a new process or like opening up a case. And with that, loading in the attorney's desired workflows, right? So the, the to-dos, the tasks, the milestones, as well as the forms and the documentation that needs to be produced for that particular process. So I have up on the screen a contact, okay? So a, a contact is going to be a, uh, a client or a prospective client, a family member, and it's going to contain a number of details about that person, which will feed into the case that they're a party to, and also the documentation. Just for context, um, give people an idea of what is happening on screen. I'm going to kind of speak to the layout a little bit. Should be very common, especially if you've used uh, web-based software before. So on the left, we have our main navigation. This is how you get around the software. I'm currently logged in as an admin, so I see everything. But uh, for the attorneys that are watching, just know if you've got staff members that you're going to give access to, you can uh, regulate, you know, kind of what they see and where they can go. There's also going to be some widgets up in the top right. Okay, and these are pretty standard. So as things happen in the software, uh, for instance, if you have a paralegal and you open up a case and assign it to them, they're going to get some notifications, which will appear here in the notification center. And then we also have an action menu. This is where you can uh, initiate things and a search. What I'm going to do now is uh, kind of lay the, the scenario where we've brought somebody into the firm, uh, or let's say that you've got somebody brand new calling in to schedule a consultation. Here's what you would do. You'd go up to create new and choose add contact. This is going to open up a form. There are a number of fields, uh, data points that you can enter in here if you have it, but for now, we're just gonna put in a first name and last name. We can always come back and add these details later. All right, so I've just created a contact for a Marcus Lassard. Brings us to the record, and in the background, it does a few other things for us, like set up space in cloud storage. Currently, there's not a lot of data, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and schedule a consultation. A couple ways to do that. Of course, I can go up to the top and hit create new, add consultation, or from the contact record, there's a card called consultations, and to the right is a little plus button, and that'll do the same thing. So a form will appear. The software is pretty smart. It knows you know, what record you're on, what you're doing. So it's gonna try to auto-populate a lot of these fields and save you some time. So for instance, it gives this a title of consultation with, and then the contact name. So now it's up to us to decide when we're gonna do it. Let's say this is gonna be an emergency consult, and we're gonna fit them in at the end of the day. Okay, 
Down in the note, I'll say something to the effect of uh, scheduled over the phone. So now we've got a consult record, and from here, few things can happen. So if I was a paralegal and I had scheduled this on the attorney's calendar, they're going to see it sync to their cloud calendar. Uh, so whether they're at court or somewhere else, they're going to see it pop up on their phone and they're going to know they've got something to attend. At the time of the consultation, they can keep notes. There's a few ways to do that. But let's say that things have progressed where they've identified the need, the client's ready to sign up. So they're going to do a retainer agreement and then open a matter. So let me show you opening up a new matter. So similar to the consult, you can do it from the action menu or you can do it right off the contact record with this plus button. Okay, a form was going to appear and I'm going to give it a um, kind of a descriptive title. And then I'm going to tell the software what type of case this is. Now this is going to be very powerful. This is what's going to drive uh, the workflow that gets loaded in and also all of the documentation. And what I love about this is the list that appears here, this is something that is uh, pulled from the library. So there's a number of pre-built cases that are available, but all of them are customizable and the attorneys can even create their own. So this is an example of where the software will fit the processes of the firm rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. For now, I'm going to do a type of case called an adjustment of status. It's very common in family immigration. And uh, there's a few other details that the software will need to know, such as how they're going to bill for it and who the parties involved are going to be. So let's say it's something like a $5,000 flat fee case for Mr. Lassard. Under the assignments, I'm going to put in my name. And this is where I could list out perhaps other staff members that will be responsible uh, and working on the case. And then in the last area, I could indicate uh, kind of what I want my team to know about this case, maybe what makes it unique, uh, the strategy that I want them to employ, um, how they want, want them to approach it. I'm also going to add one other person under parties involved. And I'm going to say sister beneficiary. All right, so we've now opened up a brand new matter and several things have happened in the background. So first up, it's brought us to the overview page. And this is where we can see at a glance what type of case it is, uh, the status of the case, who the parties involved are and their basic contact info. Across the top, there's gonna to be some tabs. We can see a workflow has been loaded in. Right now, my default view is what's called a task board. So there's a few different ways to look at tasks. See, there is a task board, which is something that you can interact with. So I'm gonna look at this. Here's a, an item for acquiring the client data, and I'll just drag and drop it into a different status. In this case, done. And maybe uh, the next step is we need to fill out some forms. This workflow, again, is entirely customizable, and it's also going to drive reporting. So you can know very quickly where a case is at, how long it's been at that stage, and maybe what needs to be done next. Very good for um, attorney case reviews with their paralegals. Yeah, really useful. So let's go ahead and look at documentation. So here in the Documents tab, we've got several different forms that have been preloaded in, and these are particular to an adjustment of status case. And I'm gonna choose one that's pretty common, and this is gonna be an I-130. So we can click on this. It'll open up a new tab and load the form into Lolly Forms. The very first time you open a form, the software's gonna ask who the subjects of the form are. So every form is a little bit different, but if you can imagine, uh, let's say, you know, a 10 page form, hundreds of different fields, some sections are going to be particular to the petitioner. Others will be for the beneficiary, the attorney, etc. So we go ahead and we list those different sections here on the side, the, those subjects, and we color code them. And that way, when you're looking at the form, the fields are going to be color coded to match the subject that they belong to. All right, so we have on screen the form, but there's no data. So there's a few ways we can get data populated into the form. The best way, of course, is to tell the software who the subject is. So let's say that uh, for the petitioner, we know that it's going to be that contact, uh, Maddie. 
So we'll select them. We'll tell the software yes, and we want to load in their data. And now any information that we have about this person, whether somebody from the office manually entered it in into the contact profile, or perhaps uh, the client provided, that, provided us that information via a um, online questionnaire or intake, that information now populates into the form. From here, a few things can happen. There might be a good amount of information, perhaps it's some. The staff will be able to go through every section and add information and update that information directly onto the form. So if they see a spelling error or there's other details they wanna add, they can type it in directly here. If they do that, another nice thing about Lolly Forms is that will sync back to the contact profile and then the next form they go to in this process, that data will copy over. So it becomes a nice uh, effect where as they go through the forms in this process, it gets easier and easier to complete them. Hmm. Something else, Bob, is that in addition to this being a tool for the staff to use to complete these forms, there is also another option. And it's probably the, the third in the list. So earlier I was mentioning there's data entry, of course, which is always an option for the staff. There's the questionnaires that you can send to the client. And the third option is you can share the forms with the client and collaborate with them online to fill it out together if you need to. This has been very, very helpful, uh, especially the last couple of years where sometimes the client can't come into the office physically, but the application's got to be done and submitted in a timely manner. And which is probably pretty common in immigration cases at any time. It can be, yeah. So, uh, Bob, would you like to try that with me? Yes. Okay. So um, I think I have given you some um, credentials to log in as the client. So um, just to speak to that, right, we have an online portal where attorneys can uh, provide credentials for clients to sign in and do things like upload documents and a checklist, fill out questionnaires, but also access forms. And I am logged in as Maddie Mickelson. Perfect. So within that view, there's a section for forms, and there's probably one that is called the I-130, and that's the one that I have pulled up. Okay. So did I just press start on that? Yeah. All right. I am in that. Perfect. So um, the way that we've set this up, it's going to be very similar to other uh, collaborative documentation experiences, like what you would get with G Suite or with uh, uh, Microsoft 365. Up at the top, you're gonna to see all the different people who are logged in and accessing that, that form. Mm -hmm. It'll have a different color and their initials. And then uh, you're gonna be able to see where they are and what they're doing in real time. So Bob, I'm on page one. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and put your cursor in one of the fields and try entering in a value. I've got a, attorney bar number. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Yep, I see you in the form. Yep, there we go. Okay, so there'll be a little beacon, so you'll see where they are as they move through and what they type. And anything that is done here on the form, it's saved automatically. So that's another thing I, I forgot to mention that's very nice is that, let's say for instance, um, you know, the client gets interrupted, right? Something happens, uh, maybe they close their browser or something. The data will still be saved in the form. They can come back and complete it at any time. And, and on the client side, John, does, does this work with any browser? Do I need any special PDF software or anything else uh, on my end? No. Um, we wanted to make this um, universally compatible with all modern browsers. So uh, won't matter what OS, there's no extensions that they need to install. And then uh, as far as the PDF goes, ultimately, you know, being that this is a USCIS form, it will need to be downloaded to PDF and then signed and submitted. At least that's the current process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Uh, just going way back to that, when that client uh, first began the intake process, uh, what, what if I didn't want to fill in all of that information uh, from the client or potential client? Is there a way that I can have the client provide that information? There is. Earlier when I was mentioning uh, questionnaires or intakes, those are going to be some curated materials that align to different processes or certain types of data. It's available online and uh, via the, the client portal that I was mentioning or that you're logged into right now, Bob. 
And the nice thing about those questionnaires is that they're also available in multiple languages. So we support, of course, English, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. And they can complete it in a browser, uh, on their desktop, or even their mobile device. John, anything else you wanted to show us today? Well, there's, again, Bob, a lot of wonderful things under the hood. Uh, I would love to show them uh, to, to you and everyone. For now, I think we'll, we'll stick on the workflows and the forms. But again, happy to, uh, to meet again and show you some other areas when we have time. That sounds good. And for anybody watching this who would like to uh, have you show them or how can somebody get a demo or find out more about this? Well, uh, you can go to lollylaw.com and there's a way to request a demo right on the website uh, header. So uh, everyone is welcome to come and reach out to us. We have a great staff, uh, very easy to work with and would love to talk to anybody. Well, it all looks really great and I really uh, appreciate your coming uh, on to the program today to show it to myself and to our audience. Thanks a lot. Thank you for having me, Bob. We've been talking with John Levesque, co-founder of Lolly Law and now co-general manager of Lolly Law at Paradigm. That does it for this episode of How It Works. Uh, this is Bob Ambrogi. You can find the full series at lawsitesblog.com. Thanks so much for watching and listening.